Hey, if you're planning a trip to Costa Rica, odds are you're going to want to have an up-close experience with the country's wildlife. Sloths and monkeys and birds and butterflies and little deer and snakes and many other kinds of wildlife await you in Costa Rica. However, just because you get on the plane doesn't mean that you're going to experience all the wildlife that the country has to offer. You're going to want to have a plan. And one way to guarantee you get what you want is to visit one of the country's wildlife rescue centers. So in 2019, before the pandemic, I visited the Jaguar Rescue Center near Puerto Viejo de Talamanca, and here is what I saw. But first, let me introduce myself. That's me, I'm a US born gringo. Years ago, I studied Spanish in Costa Rica, and as a student, I learned Spanish, I made friends, and we explored the country from the Pacific to the Caribbean and parts in between. So this is my buddy, Jose Pablo. He's a Tico from the town of Barva de Heredia. He's my frequent wingman, providing deep local knowledge as we explore the country together, enjoying the wildlife and the beaches and the rainforests and the volcanoes, and you get the picture. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we publish new videos. You can also uh, read about Costa Rica at costaricatravel.tips. So as I mentioned before, the Jaguar Rescue Center is located near the Caribbean beach town of Puerto Viejo in the Limón province, which is about four and a half to five and a half hours from the San Juan de Maria International Airport, which is often referred to as the San Jose Airport, even though it's technically not in San Jose, it's in a place called Alajuela. I always point that out because it can be confusing. So when you first arrive at the Jaguar Rescue Center, you'll notice a lovely outdoor cafe, which is completely surrounded by the green rainforest foliage. And the first impression that hit me is the rainforest is hot and humid. You'll want to dress appropriately. That's Jose Pablo right there in the red tank top. He's a very smart man. The Jaguar Rescue Center is a temporary and sometimes permanent home for sick, injured, and orphaned animals such as monkeys and sloths and birds and reptiles. They provide veterinary services, round-the-clock care and comfort to animals that would otherwise be unable to survive in the natural habitat. And the rescue center relies on donations and revenue associated with tours like the one Jose Pablo and I took. And we actually chose to take a private tour, which in 2019 was around $60 US per person. So something that you may notice in this video is that there are plenty of videos and photos of the animals and a few of the animals with their caretakers. What you won't see are any photos or videos of me with the animals. You won't see any selfies with, with me or Jose Pablo. Uh, and that's because selfies with animals, especially those uh, where you're holding the animal or otherwise touching an animal, or if the animal might hurt you, might hurt a human, all of those kinds of uh, selfies, those kinds of photos and videos, those are officially discouraged by the government of Costa Rica. So be careful if you're in Costa Rica, selfies with the animals, not, uh, not encouraged. This is our volunteer tour okay. guide, so, Ivy, yeah, from the U.S. To state the of Texas. Jaguar Rescue Center. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. I don't know if you've really looked anything up about us, but every time you buy a ticket, it's a donation for yep. us. So. Thank you very much. We're not sure. really funded by the government or anything, so more than anything, when people come through, you buy a ticket, you get a little bit of a glimpse into what we're doing here, but that's a, and that, yeah. for us, it's a lot in return. We get to build new enclosures, we get to buy medications, buy food, accept new animals. Thank you so much. So you can actually see Chow over there. Do you see him with his... Ah. that are permanent residents and we'll probably run into one her name is chai um, and she likes to go up to people and lick them so if she oh, tries good. that don't freak it's out not really not humanized she's probably going to go and hide over there but this is chai so these are the white tailed deers that i was just talking about yeah. now you can see how short they are yeah these two since they can't be released we basically let them go wherever they feel like it but she has it's basically be like a sodium deficiency, which means she's constantly seeking things to lick. Yeah. Um, so you'll catch her licking things over here, like the poles, the trees, the pebbles. But when we sweat as well, she'll come up to us and start licking us. And that's where that problem arose from. Yeah. Um, and there's always that risk of if we release her, even though she's physically well enough to be released, yeah. if she goes up to the wrong person to uh, try and lick them, trouble. that can be a problem. Yeah. yeah. So we can find her weirdness to here. She can go wherever she feels like it, but she just won't be released. Saguti. You see, this is, they always are around here stealing from, and then they chase each other too. 
That's awesome. Going along the way, you're really liking an animal, and you say, "Hey, I want to spend an extra five minutes here." It's perfectly okay. Fine. Thank you. So this is the Amolino. This is another one of oh our gosh. permanent residents, and I'm going to show you a mix of permanent and the ones that we're going to be releasing. And don't worry, I'll give you all the information for them. Look, awesome. But do Look you want to try and guess what type of thing? Yeah, cougars. And then you have ocelots. Jaguarundis, margays, and oncillas. So this is the second smallest species. This is about as big as they get. It, so even though it is illegal to have any type of wild animal as a pet here, it happens still because oh, we have some sure. that came in as pets. But for a, a lot of animals, because okay. they look very similar to ocelots, but they're usually up higher in the okay. trees. They're trying to catch birds, lizards. Alright, we're gonna continue this way. So I wanna show you something cool. All of these are red eyed oh tree frog God. eggs that have all been laid, I kid you not, within oh the God. past like twenty four hours after it started that to is. rain. Because I did a tour yesterday and I didn't see these. There's some over there. Um oh. those are Estos son los de la rana con ojos rojos. Oh, okay. Pero también tenemos esos óvulos de ella. No sé qué tipo uh -huh. de especies son estos. Oh, wow. ¿Qué más? Look at those. Pero yo sé por seguro que estos son los de los ojos rojos. Okay. Look at these are almost becoming the little tiny tadpoles. Oh, okay. So they and once they're ready to, or once they're getting ready to hatch, you'll start to see the actual bodies inside and you'll see them start to move around as well. And when they cause enough friction, they plop into the water. Um, and then they become Those are also the little tadpoles inside that are getting ready to hatch. So with baby caimans, they actually stay with their mom for up to two years sometimes. Really? Years. That is a long time for a reptile if you think about it. That's a lot yeah. of maternal care. It really um, is. But if you think about it too, at this size, they're easily going to be prey for, say, an ocelot or um, a large bird, even a raccoon. Mm -hmm. So that's why mom is still with them. She's protecting them, basically. While they're here, we give them fish for them to be able to start learning how to hunt on their own because, like I said, mom's protecting them, not feeding them as often, so we want them to do the same thing. But these babies were brought to us from a tilapia farm. So there was a guy who said the mom and the babies found the tilapia lottery and were eating all his tilapia. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's the difference between caimans and crocodiles, or one of them. Crocodiles are oftentimes going to lay with their heads flat, even on the ground, mm -hmm. whereas these will say they're usually with their heads sticking up a little bit. And they'll look like little statues. They do look like little statues. That's hilarious. He's got his... This guy right here, this has got his head, hmm. he's got his eyeballs out of the water, and that's it. That's hilarious. So these are ambush predators, the caimans and the crocodiles, which means they basically just wait patiently until prey gets close enough. Yeah. Mm hmm. group earlier that oh here it is that group is in an aisle over here let's see if we can spot her uh -huh. so we saw bancha earlier remember mm -hmm. bancha the caiman that we saw first she's about eight to nine years old she's a caiman coco right here is about 10 years old and she's a crocodile so you can see the size difference oh, between yeah. them. even Thank then you. 10 years old. So so she's still pretty small. Go around. It's cool. So we're going to go over here and then so the majority of the workers at this rescue center are volunteers that make a minimum four week commitment. If you want information about how you could become a volunteer, you can visit the website at jaguarrescue.foundation. So we're going to talk about our spider monkeys. We okay. have three of them here. We have Nerea. We have Baco who's hiding on the blanket over oh, there, and then we have Gigi in the end. <laughs> Do you know what type of species this is? I just said it. I think I might have just said it. You said chimpanzee, right? It is a chimpanzee. Spider monkey. Spider monkey. Yes, oh, this is going to be the largest monkey in Costa Rica. May I permit to andar? Um, so, the ones that we have currently, we're in the process of introducing them to each other. With any type of uh, larger primate, there's always oh, yeah. that chance of aggression. So you, you can just throw them in with each other and expect yep. them to be best friends right yep. away. Yep. So, what we do first is we allow them to get visually acquainted with each other. 
each other and then we can try to open the doors between them. Sure. But all of them arrived pretty recently. Um, Bako has met Gigi and okay. Bako has met Nerea, but the ones with the chance haven't met each other. So these two right here were pets and they've just arrived and they cannot be released. So this doesn't mean that any time a monkey comes in as a pet that it's impossible to release them. Sure. We call the um, javelinas up north. Mm -hmm. They will usually grow these big teeth. As you can see, she's not aggressive. Yeah. This is because she was from a petting zoo, which means people would go in, ah. pay, and okay. eat yeah. animals. Yeah, yeah. In the wild, if you see a colored peccary, don't try to approach them yeah. at all because they're really <laughs> aggressive. Yeah, what, what is she of, doing? This is how they they claim their territory, oh. like on trees, but she does it to people instead. Yeah. And now I don't know if you can smell like it smells like uh, like uh, onion. Okay. That's her putting her like sick lens on me. She's gonna go her own way. Mm. But yeah, because she was from a petting zoo, that's why she's used to people approaching her. Otherwise, that's not normal behavior sure. for an animal like this. And that is, it also sucks because if she wasn't humanized, there's a higher chance of her being able to be released. Yeah. The other thing though is we still are, are on a very specialized diet with her. It has to be the right size, the right texture. Otherwise, it's too difficult for her to eat. So those are the two main reasons why so far she's a permanent resident. Mm -hmm. She stays wherever. That's my favorite animal in the entire mm -hmm. So, you know, this type of species this is? Oh my gosh. This is another one of my favorite animals. We have sloths and monkeys, but these two are my favorite. I have no idea. Have you heard of the blue-footed boobies of the Galapagos? I have. So, son piqueros, pero piqueros. se encuentran en los Galápagos. Mm -hmm. Tienen así las patas azules. Sí. Eso algún, es como son parientes, pero esos tienen los, las patas marrón. Okay. Así se les llaman, pero más que todo piqueros. Piqueros. So, they're going to be aquatic birds, just like the other mm -hmm. boobies that you've heard of. They fly over the ocean and when they're flights of being a fledgling, which means at the age where she's supposed to start learning how to fly. So, because she couldn't fly, she started starving and that's when somebody found her. This wing isn't something that we can re-break and then have it heal over. We did it with another one named Peach. And then when Peach got better, we started seeing her like hop around the leaves and then one day she left and she basically released herself. But with her, she can never fly again. So it's one of those times. Cariblancos. Mm -hmm. These are her white faces. If they come here, hmm? if they come to the glass, don't make faces at no. them. Don't talk to them. Don't poke in it. Because these will take anything as offensive and then start screaming too. <laughs> oh, now this guy's licking his own face. That's very nice for, for, for visitors. That's okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'll have uh, them doing that in front of little kids. And I'm just like, should I tell them to close their eyes? I, don't I think know. it's even um, but yeah, these are going to be our white faced capuchins. We have six individuals in total in this group. This is the only monkey species that we have where we don't have any permanent. And the thing is only about three or four people can work with this species. Like if I were to go in here, they don't know me. I do the wrong thing. They're going to react aggressively. They're okay. going to attack me and bite me. So there's only a few people that can work with them. See this guy's just playing with that rope. He's just been <laughs> like my cat. These will also fall from up here, land on the ground, and it literally looks like they have bounced. Usually what people think, uh, but while they're here, so, well, first of all, howler monkeys, spider monkeys, white-faced capuchins, they're highly complex social animals, and they always have an outline. Yeah. You see, this is Aureli who works with oh, them. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's feeding time. She has to have so much patience working with them. That's what I always say, because they come up to her, pull her hair, put their fingers in her mouth, and everything. <laughs> Oh, there's one that got out in the vestibule. So for all you notice, there's a vestibule there. We always have to have two doors before yeah. we exit the monkeys. Because sure. if one of them gets out like that, they're going to be right out right away. ¿Dónde vas a poner la rama? No está bien. ¿Pero dónde la vas a poner? ¿Allí encima o arriba de una de estas cosas? No, no, no te preocupes, nosotros podemos ver. That's what they sound like when they're annoyed with each other. 
There's you can see all of them starting to get excited about the branches. This is a girl telling me about gets pink eye all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah, nope, I'm not, nope, I'm not even looking at them. Did you ever watch Friends? Yes, and I know, so Ross had a monkey, right? Yeah, with Marcel, that's yes. the same species. What, if you ever follow Marcel into the bed of zoo because he became too much to handle? Okay. That's basically, it. it's accurate. That's usually found in most places in the states from up north in Canada all the way south into Argentina. Yep. This has one of the largest distributions for a snake on the planet. This is another snake that people are really scared of and oftentimes try to get rid of. Oh, he's looking at me today. Um, but for most snakes, the golden rule is if you don't bother them, they don't bother you, right? They don't have mm -hmm. enough energy to just attack you for no reason this is going to be the one snake where even if i were to step right next to it mm -hmm. they're going to see that as a threat and automatically strike at people so about one third of all hospitalizations in costa rica each year are from this snake right here at one point there was an 80 percent fatality rate but now it's it basically you can get yourself to any major hospital you're pretty much fine you have about six hours Looking, so, he's looking straight in my camera. Yeah, he's looking right like he's going higher and higher. <laughs> Is that okay? No, 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 not you. I meant oh. that guy. Let me ask him. Maybe I'll ask him for a few minutes to see if he stops. But yeah, she arrived as a pet ah. and she's physically well enough to like fly away. It's just that it's going to take her a while to mentally get over the fact that she's near humans she every day. She does, she tries to sometimes. So if she does it, don't encourage it, don't okay. repeat it. Got it. Because if she leaves one day, we don't want her to be doing that. If she leaves and she lands somewhere, the first thing she does is start talking with yeah, yeah, this is the rainbow toucan. So she's trying to catch something right now. So do you know that they're omnivores? They can that. eat, sometimes she'll be doing this, she's trying to catch like flies, mosquitoes, but they can also go into other birds' nests and steal eggs to oh, eat. Wow. Um, they will also eat red-eyed tree frogs, so they will eat meat, but they will also eat fruits and berries and a variety of different things, so their beak can do a lot. This bird arrived with head trauma a few months ago, well it was actually like four months ago now, and when she first arrived, we had her in an enclosure, sort of like you see this one, uh -huh. by herself. Yeah. But because she didn't like to be closed in, she started to basically ram into the walls and was completely freaked out, lost most of her feathers. So instead of having her in an enclosure, she comes out with these two every day. She can practice hopping around and it's allowed her to get her feathers to grow back. Uh, just like with the other one, if the day comes that she feels like she's ready to leave, she can basically release herself. She has a zip tie on her ankle. So when a bird um, that gets released from here, if we want to be able to identify mm -hmm. them, we will just put like a little zip tie. It doesn't harm them. It's tight enough to where it doesn't get caught in anything. Okay. And we'll be able to visually identify her if she starts flying. These animals are also social. So they're not solitary, which means the day that she leaves, the day that this one leaves, 
they're gonna have to find a group uh, to join and a partner and it'll usually be a uh, groups of like between four and six individuals or so to run away so you get to see them a little bit better you can see there's about three of them in here there's one up high here okay. there's gonna be one in there and it looks like there's one all the way at the top okay so I'm gonna get over here just to talk to you about them and Great. get out of the way so with these at this size and this guy's sitting in his plate these are going to be about two years old. So at this age, mom is about basically leaving them. Mom will leave the territory of the baby and move on to something else. Okay. So at this age, this is the final year with them of us with them here. They're reaching sexual maturity, and then we're going to release them. And you can see that now they're starting to spread out. So when they're babies, because they naturally don't have mom here, mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll cuddle with each other. But as they get older, they'll start to need space from each other, and these are starting to figure that out. This one's over here, this one's yeah, over there. Yeah, they're spreading out. There's one on that branch over there. And they're starting to spread out. On top of that, we need them to start climbing a lot more, being able to look a lot more like normal sluts. Like, they look like that, like a just like a ball of fur hidden in camouflage. That's perfect. That's what we want them to be doing. So when we release these individuals, we will build what would be called a sloth tower. It's going to look very similar to the smaller, but it's going to be up pretty high in a tree canopy. Um, and that way, once we are ready to release them, we just have to open the windows, connect ropes to the tree canopies, and then the sloths can basically crawl in and out for as long as they'd like. Generally, they'll do this for an average of about three to four weeks. Wow. And when we see that they've all exited for the last time, we shut the windows and they've officially become wild They're animals. wild. And that's wow. when it's officially they are released. Something really special is that the last group that we released about four months ago, we put radio tracking collars on them. And that's the first time that we've been able really? to do that. Mm -hmm. So somebody goes out every day at 11.30 a.m., goes out and tracks them and sees how much have they moved overnight, how big is their territory, what kind of activity are they partaking in. So, yeah, they love I'm, the hibiscus. This like, is amazing. I'm so monkeys, sorry. This is just... No, it's fine. Monkeys, sloths, um, howler monkeys. Humans also like hibiscus. We make teas yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, we did put the tracking collars in this girl. Becky goes out every day and she tracks these sloths. And okay, she'll tres. do it for two years. Tres. Como que tres? Que si hay tres adentro? Sí. Tres. Sí. I think it's interesting that the, 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 this animal is has no problem like approaching me, looking at me, like no. So the thing is that they have terrible vision. Oh. They can smell really well, and that's why you see him always putting his nose to things. But their eyes are so small, they can see in color, but visually everything is going to be super blurry for them. Interesting. So okay. that's why another thing is that it's really important for us not to be touching them yeah. because that yeah. stresses them out. Sure. Whereas if we're sort of by them, they can't really sense us. That's not even as useful as touches. So touch is going to be the worst thing for sloths because they don't like us. We look like predators. Yeah. But as long as we're feeding them, we're not messing with them, we're giving them what they need to grow, then they're The Floki was born with one nail on each one of oh. his limbs. Oh gosh. This is a genetic mutation and we're pretty sure that's why his, his mom abandoned him. Yeah. So he was found on the ground as a baby. He has grown to be basically like any other sloth. He can get around. His favorite spot is up in that corner. But every once in a while, he does end up with like blisters on his hands from more weight on just one now. Yeah, and because they look like they're always smiling. Yes. But that's really, that's not a real smile. That's just their natural yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people always want to attribute, um, attribute mm. human characteristics yeah. to animals. And so they yeah. think, oh, it's smiling. It wants to give me a hug, but they don't. <laughs> It's like the koalas and all those other animals that... This reflex 
of grabbing onto things. Like if you stay close enough, they might actually put their arms out to try and grab you. It's not because they want affection, it's just a reflex for them yeah. to constantly be latching onto things. They have modified arm tendons. So whereas if we were to hang like this, we'd last what, like two seconds? Mm -hmm. Their tendons are evolved to where that is a natural comfortable position. They feel more comfortable hanging like that than they do anything else. They can give birth hanging upside down. Um, they've been known to die and continue hanging for hours <laughs> afterwards. Right, now they're all safely back inside here. So I'm gonna show you all the baby monkeys. Hey guys. So, this is going to be our monkey kindergarten, <laughs> so at least that's what I like to call it. It's hilarious. So whenever our monkeys arrive to our center, as babies, they spend the first year in here. They're learning how to use their muscles, they're learning how sure. to use their tails. And then the juvenile group, which I'll show you in the moment, those are the ones that go out to the forest every day. These can't go out to the forest yet because mm. we're still giving them milk, right? We're still giving them vitamins. Mm. Some yeah. of them are still in treatment. So they spend their day here at our center. Do you want to try and guess what type of species this is? Is this the capuchin? No, it's a spider, spider monkey. Spider monkey. Yeah, good job. <laughs> so for size reference, mm -hmm. she is about two months old. And then the one that there that just jumped, he's yeah. just turned a year old. Okay. So spiders so are really big compared to howler monkeys, even are. from a young age. Rico right here at the very top, uh -huh. you'll notice that he doesn't use one of his arms very much. Okay. He arrived to us, he fell from his mom, hmm. landed on this bad shoulder, and he's had surgeries on it twice. Oh. To this day, does not use that arm very much, huh. but you can see he's using his tail. Yeah. You can see he can climb, so he's still going to get released. You know, as long as he otherwise grows healthy and yeah. strong, we're going to plan to release him. Sansa right here, her mom oh, sure. was fighting another spider monkey and the other spider monkey grabbed her and threw her on the ground. Okay. We went back to try and see if we could do any sort of reunion and it didn't work so we're raising her. We have Rafiki who's all the way on the other side who's climbing okay, on his I own. I see that, yeah. He, his mom was electrocuted, she died and now we're raising him. So I don't know if you've heard about this issue of electrocutions yep. is a really big problem. Yep. A lot of our animals they're come grabbing, in electrocuted. Yep, they're happens, grabbing the electric line. Yep, and... it happens especially to sloths, but it also happens to monkeys. It happens to anteaters, to any type of arboreal animal. Yep. Hey, what is the, what's the species of this, of this one on the very bottom that's just kind of like hanging on? This one right here? No, over here on the left. It's just kind of hanging on. You know what? Everybody always asks me that. Yeah, but did, did, did I really? Do people that make that joke? Yet. Do people make yeah. that joke a lot? Oh. It's so endearing, the, like, the... It's just endearing. Herbivores. So they're going to be eating leaves, flowers, fruits, and vegetables. So we always have to have fresh leaves for them. And then a little bit of a plate for food but they don't need any type of meat. Huh. So does the, does the lack of protein in their diet uh, result in kind of less energy, less yes. enthusiasm? Yeah, so the, ha the spiders are gonna have a little bit more energy because 75% of their diet is fruits and vegetables. Yeah. But for the howlers, 75% is leaves and flowers. So that's why they're so slow. And that's the same thing I say for sloths. Imagine if you were eating a salad your entire life, how yeah. much energy are you gonna get from lettuce your entire life? But I'd be, and I'd be cranky Not too. Not much. So the little bit of energy that they have, yeah. they have to be careful about where they're spending it. With howlers, they have a little bit more energy than a sloth because 25% of it is still fruits and vegetables. Sure. Uh, but they're in the wild, they're gonna forage and then they're gonna nap. <laughs> and then they're gonna wake up, they're gonna forage and then they nap. And then they wake up, they look for food and they nap again. So they nap a lot to conserve energy. Oh my gosh. So this is Olivier. He's our smallest one, but he's oh, not yeah. the youngest one. Olivier. So he should be at this point, probably about 10 months old is what we're sort of, cause he came in last year in, he arrived last July, I think. No, then that makes him about a year old. No, maybe August. He came in almost a year ago, so he should be nearing that year in age, but he's still the size of like a six month old monkey. He came in with some pretty bad head trauma mm. and he, neurologically speaking, has not fully recovered, mm. but he's still showing us that he's motivated to mm -hmm. eat, he's motivated to socialize. 
So he probably has some long-term head trauma, but we're still going to give him the opportunity to live sure. as long as he shows us he wants to. He will probably not be released, but when he gets to this group, he'll just go out to the forest and otherwise feel like a normal monkey for the rest of his life. So they can start okay. getting used ah. to him, and then hopefully we'll be able to integrate him with the other Makes group. Total so. sense. <laughs> Notice how they're hanging on like yes. that or clinging yeah. onto her hair. So here we've been with Emma over here clinging onto her hair. With the moms, they're usually going to grab onto the lower back hair because that's where mom has really long hair. Okay. For us, not usually. Not so much. So they'll go right. to our hairs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Tyson right there laying on the, on okay. the blanket. Oh, okay. You see, uh, that's his a little leg loose. that doesn't use Yeah, that. gotcha. But I mean, if he doesn't use that, like if it ends up happening that we have to amputate it, but he still has function in his other arms, his other leg can use his tail, he can still be released. Okay. He also lost part of his vision on one eye, and then you can see his scrapes on his back. Okay. Yeah, I see that. So he's still a ways away from being able to be really good. So check out this volunteer. Uh, look at her head. Look at the very top of her head. See if you notice. It looks like she's got a ponytail up tight. But nope, that's not a ponytail. That is a monkey on her head. <laughs> look at that. So this one, see, let's go, this one right here that's on the table, right there that's mm -hmm. facing us, that's Bono. So Bono was just like Olivier when he arrived. Um, I volunteered here three years ago. It was the first time I volunteered. It was only for three months. Um, and he was like Olivier, was not growing, was not as big as the other ones. And at this point, he's four years old. So he should be almost twice that size. But... He just, he's a permanent resident, but he's yeah. otherwise fine. He goes out to the forest every day. He gets to socialize with these as much as he wants. He just won't ever be released. Sure. But to him, it's a normal life. And it yeah. doesn't automatically mean we had to euthanize him. Right. But that is Bono. We have a couple of them are hiding under there. We have See those guys. a lot of them are over here trying to be warm under the heating lamp. So you, you know when it cold? rains, the same way that we get a little bit cold from rain, they want to stay warm too. <laughs> So that's it. That's the Jaguar Rescue Center near Puerto Viejo in Costa Rica. So the Rescue Center's website is jaguarrescue.foundation. They offer many ways to support their work, including taking a tour like we did. Also would invite you to please take a minute to subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, give us a like, and tell me which animal you like best or which animal you're most interested in seeing in Costa Rica. Uh, tell me all about that in the comments if you would. Also, our website is CostaRicaTravel.tips. Uh, we offer all kinds of um, uh, great information uh, for the traveler or someone who's interested in traveling or spending some time in Costa Rica. Until next time, I'm Chief Frijo Jones. Nos vemos la próxima vez. Pura vida.